Sorry, I'm just saying that we're now going live on YouTube. So for those of you in the central part of the church, if you don't want the back of your head to be filmed, then please move to one of the side aisles. Thank you.
am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to St Lawrence Church, Long Buckby, as we gather together to give thanks to God for the life of Stephen. My name is the Reverend Graham Collingridge, I'm the vicar of Long Buckby, Watford, West Haddon and Winnick and it's a great honour to be here and preside at this funeral this afternoon. Welcome to you in church and also welcome to you who are watching online at home via our YouTube link. You're all most welcome. And a special welcome to Mark and Diana, Stephen's children, and Katie and Jacob and Olivia, the grandchildren. So let's remember why we've gathered here this afternoon. We've gathered here to remember before God our brother Stephen, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, and to commit his body to be buried alongside the cremated remains of his wife Elizabeth at the end of the service. And of course we've also gathered together to comfort one another in our grief. And I hope that through the participation in this service, through the joining in of the hymns as well. Use that as an opportunity to express your feelings of thankfulness or mourning and weeping. All emotions are entirely justified this afternoon. And also, if anyone can't see, there are some seats over here, and I absolutely no problem if you want to move closer if you're bunched up somewhere during the, during the first hymn. That, that would be fine. But as we gather together now, let me lead us in a prayer. God of all consolation, your son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Look with compassion on your children in their loss. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I hope you've all got sight of an order of service. If you haven't, raise a hand and we'll see if we can sort that out for you. And we're going to sing our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
you please to be seated now and Stephen's granddaughter Katie is going to come and read something for us. Thank you very much Katie. Take your mask off. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Katie Osborne, um, I'm Stephen's granddaughter. Um, on behalf of myself and my family, I would like to thank you all for being here um, and for the overwhelming amount of support that we've received over the past month. Um, it's been so nice to see so many people who loved and respected my grandfather. My granddad lived a life dedicated to supporting the community and working hard. Many of you knew him as a local councillor um, and nobody can deny how much he loved our village. He was also notorious for his profession as Stephen the Tellyman, or Steve. Um, he was always willing to give advice to those who needed it. The amount of times that I've rang him with the classic, Grandad, I need some help, is funny to look back on, if I'm honest. A prime example of this is probably about a year ago. Um, I repainted my bedroom. Um, um, I was moving about some stuff, and I accidentally <laughs> managed to completely, and I mean completely, destroy my television. I can't tell you how, but um, I rang my dad in a panic um, with that instant, I know I'm in big trouble feeling, and um, he told me to speak to Grandad about it. So I spent the whole day kind of worrying, and um, later on I got a call from him and he said, don't worry about it, my duck, I've sorted it. That was it. <laughs> Next thing I know, I've got a new little set ready for me to take home. Honestly, I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't even believe I managed to get away with it. <laughs> Um, we'd always thank him for what he did with it, for us, but Grandad never did things for praise, to be honest. Um, he didn't want to hear us say thanks, um, which, to be honest, it always kind of confused me. But I guess now, looking back, um, his love was obvious in his actions um, rather than his words. He liked doing things for people, um, and he'd never hesitate to help out a friend in need. Something may, all, a lot of you may not know about us and our family is that my little sister, is, um, she's quite sporty, Olivia. She, um, she plays football, and she's, she's very good at it. Um, Grandad always encouraged her, um, and she recently told me that each week she'd come in after training and Grandad would always say, did you score? Unfortunately, she never did, but he was always invested and he, he checked every week. 
Um, and what's funny is that her first goal came a week after Grandad passed. It was almost like a, like a sign, um, a sign that he was there in spirit. Olivia will agree with me um, when I say that he would have been so proud. I believe his words would have been, Oi, Lulu, that's not bad, is it? Which translates in Grandad language to, I'm really proud of you. Jacob was undeniably very close with Grandad. Our Jacob's very musically inclined, and Grandad always supported that. Um, he actually paid for Jacob's guitar lessons, um, but it was definitely not without, without a price. <laughs> Each week, Jacob would get a call, summoning him over to Grandad's house. Um, he always had a new task for him. Sometimes it was sweeping, occasionally collecting fruit from the trees, and even making Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> um, Jacob always had a little moan, but I think he'll agree with me. When I say that he'd do anything for one of those calls again, it's funny what you end up missing. When talking to family and friends, the things that I've heard the most about... Sorry. Yeah. The things that I've heard the most is how much um, fun Grandad could be. We all remember his ability to let his hair down, the hair that he had anyway and enjoy himself. His favourite tune was Gimme Gimme Good Him" by the Crazy Elephant. I miss dancing with him to that. He had some great moves. I think we all know who will miss him the most. His dog, Miguel. Their love for one another was unmatched. I've never seen a man love a dog more than Grandad loved Miguel, or the pig, as he liked to call him. He treated him like his baby. The thing that always gets me is how often Miguel stands at the bottom of the stairs waiting for him to come down. He wishes, like we all do, that Steve was still here with us. I hope that we can keep his memory alive by continuing to share stories and to honour him. Grandad, Dad, Uncle Steve, or Ozzy, as a lot of people knew him, will miss you. Our memories allow us to think back with a smile. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Well done. Great honour to your grandfather. I'm now going to invite Jeff Spokes to come and give a tribute to Stephen. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Stephen John Osborne, my dear, dear friend, known to you all, this is a most difficult task to perform. Where do I start? Well, here goes. You will all know him by different names. Mr. Osborne, Councillor Osborne, but of course to many, Oz, Ozzy, and as a late proprietor of Station Garage, Mr. Walter Salisbury would say, Butter Oz, after that well-known biscuit. I first met Steve as a young boy when he came to repair my parents' TV. My father told me he was my cousin and that this would be a good job for me to be involved in. And of course, as many of you know, I was to be by his side for the rest of his life. What fun we had. We started to work from his grandmother's small shoemaker's workshop at 61 East Street. At the time, he was still employed by Robinson Rentals and was area manager for South Wales. This led to many miles being travelled back and forth to Wales in his A35 van. This, of course, could not last. So he decided to set up his own TV business. And in 1967, Stephen Osborne Television was born. He had great help and support in this venture from his close friends, which included Graham, known to many of us as Ben, and his wife, Verve Draper. He spent many happy hours with them over the years on holidays and outings with their families. Verve would always be at home, just across the road, where she would keep an eye out for Steve's grandmother, Ruth, who he adored and lived with for many years. Steve had a passion for fast cars, Jaguars, Mercedes, Rovers, the list goes on. He was a member of a car rally club 
and Chris Salisbury and myself would spend weekends rallying around Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire with him, returning to Long Buckby, usually with a broken vehicle, a Ford Cortina Mark I, which had to go down to Station Garage on Monday morning to be fixed by Martin, Surrey, Bob and Ron, who would all gave us a right old time, pulling his leg, great times had by all. Fishing was another passion. He was a member of Lombardy Fishing Club, spending time course fishing with Rob Bailey, Morbs, and of course Mick Hill, who became a close friend of Oz and myself. He tried sea fishing. He gave that a miss after a while. He kept being seasick. He then tried trout fishing with his old mate Martin Bailey, mostly on Pitsford and Ravensthorpe and Drake at Reservoirs on boats not seasick, and far safer, he told me. The TV trade was booming in the 60s and 70s. Colour TV was just starting, and Steve met with Mrs Frost and purchased 14 High Street, which was to become his family home, shop and workshop. Trade was good. Many people worked for him at this time, fitting aerials and installing and repairing all manner of electrical goods. Time marched on. Steve was hospitalised with appendix and was very poorly and took a long time to recover. But in the true spirit of good old Buckby, help came from all directions. Richard and Nick Draper, Phil Orr and of course Graham Draper helping to deliver TVs, fix aerials, keeping us all laughing and in good spirits. So many good people, Chris Keating, Dave Townsend, Keith Manning and so many more. If you're here today and I have forgotten you, please forgive me. Steve had so many friends, and now we move on. Shops in Northampton, Daventry, and rugby that Steve had came and went. Business was tough. TV shops and workshops closing all over the country. He carried on working by himself from 14 High Street, with part-time help from Mick and Malk Shirley. This was a really hard time, and Steve had to find a way of keep, to keep going. He started to phone around the country to central workshops to offer to take their return TVs, which he sold on to dealers and to customers. This was to become a better time for him, but yes, more help needed. Alan, Phil, John, Steve and myself and others will be seen unloading, loading the old Merck van outside number 14. That old van has visited so many places all around Scotland, Wales and England making new friends, and so many of you here today. Thank you. But now, a new adventure, 1979. Steve, myself, and Steve Reeve put our names into the hat for the parish council elections, and we were voted onto the council. Many hours were spent by Steve and Mr Arthur Cox, chairman of the council, learning all about the parish and how it was administered. Steve, already a member of Lombardy Conservative since 1968, decided to have a go at becoming a district councillor and won the Lombardy Ward seat in May 2002 and was the long-standing chairman of the planning committee, becoming the chairman of the council in 2014. Whilst this was going on, he also was elected to the Northamptonshire County Council in March 2007, becoming the chairman of that council in 2018. Of course, he was our long-standing chairman of the parish council until his mobility became difficult and he decided to retire from the council in 2021. This did not stop him from taking part in village life. He still had his door open to all at 14 High Street. Saturday mornings you would find Arnold Baker, Helen, Alan Rose, parish councillors and others calling in to discuss all manner of topics and giving me a real hard time on how the parish council should be run. The last duty he performed was at the remembrance service in November at this church. He made a great effort to arrive here, read out the names of the fallen. He was so proud of them, two of which, the Townsend brothers, were his and my relatives. Thank you, Graham, for asking him to do that. He said to me after the service, that would be his last time. He did this service and wreath laying for many years. Steve enjoyed eating out at the Village Spice and to say 
to Jay, Chef, Abdul and all the staff, many thanks for the way you looked after him. A special thanks to all the parish clerks who worked so hard for him, Betty, Liz and of course Sue. And I must not forget Tilly, the lady housekeeper who looked after Elizabeth and Steve for so many years. Thank you. Yes, there is more. I could spend the rest of the day giving stories that would amaze you all. But I think, I know, you all have that special memory of Steve, a man of Lombardy, a good old boy of the parish, who touched so many lives and who, whose passing is such a great loss to us all. God bless it. Thank you, Jeff. I'm sure that for you and for KT, it's, it's a great honour to do this, but it also is costly, isn't it? And uh, comes with emotion as well. Let's just pause for a moment, shall we, to reflect on what we've heard. And so now I am going to read from the Bible, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. And he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I was um, sitting at the back of St. Lawrence, where those guys are on, on the back of church. Um, right, um, you can see where I am, right at the very end of the wall. Hiding out of sight behind Stephen, preparing to observe my curate, who was about to take a funeral. And Stephen turns round and says in a loud voice, Graham, I want you to be my chaplain when I become chairman of the county council. It's not much. Say the prayer at the beginning of every meeting, six meetings a year, and a civic service at St. Lawrence. Oh yes, and you won't be paid expenses. Uh, you can tell, can't you? It wasn't a request, was it? It was an instruction from Stephen. I think you know, you know that, don't you? But what does a chaplain actually do? Well, I didn't know, so I did a bit of research, and I found there's been lots of controversy over the previous few years, one council got a High Court ruling 
that prayers before council meetings were illegal. So the government then quickly passed the Local Government Religious Observances Act 2015. You knew that anyway, didn't you? Which establishes the right of a council to choose to have prayers. And Stephen chose to exercise that right and put the Christian faith during his term as chairman of the county council in the public square. So as I prepared for my first meeting, I was reading the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah in my daily readings and prayers. And Jeremiah was in prison because his preaching upset the authorities. Not such an inspiring start, I guess. But behind the scenes, the king used to have secret meetings with him because he wanted spiritual counsel. So I thought, there's the model, isn't it? Publicly indifferent or hostility, but behind the scenes, we just might want to have a chat every now and then. And I, as I prepared for my first county council meeting with Stephen as, as chair for the first time, I read a couple of verses from the Apostle Paul's letter to Timothy, chapter 2. And he says this, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings be made for all people and for kings and for all in authority so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Saviour, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And that's how I understand the importance of faith in politics, that governing authorities are basically a good thing and the church must pray for them and call the country to pray for them. I also adapted a prayer by the Church of England for Queen and Parliament for the County Council, which I'll pray later on. Well, my second meeting um, at, as chaplain to Stephen in the County Council was only a few weeks later. Remember? Only six meetings a year? But it wasn't. As the full horror of the County Council's financial situation emerged. And in my daily Bible readings on another morning, I'd read Psalm 69, which seemed very apt, but maybe not very diplomatic. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck and I sink deep in the mire. And I thought, I, I don't really want to be disrespectful to the county council. And you have to be very careful, don't you, in politics, how things look as important as what you actually say. But later on in that psalm, I found these words. As for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. With your faithful help, rescue me from sinking into the mire. And that was a prayer that I offered up to God on behalf of the county council in a time of great hardship. And my mum was particularly proud because we were televised on ITN, news at 10 that night. But my basic point is this. I believe that the Christian faith has a legitimate place and has a real contribution to make in public life, in the public square, and in politics, its values, you heard the Sermon on the Mount, its prayers in all circumstances, its basic valuing of good government, and also because it's got a lot of stories of people in power, the choices and the dilemmas that they face. It's about the good things they do and also the terrible mistakes they make. And through the Bible's texts, we've got stories and prayers for all situations. So, that's what I think about faith. But more than that, I believe that the Christian faith offers a critique of power. And the best symbol of this is the empty cross of Jesus Christ. And if you look on the east window, you should be able to see an empty cross. What is the cross. Well, in Jesus' time, the cross was a tool of state execution. And the message of the Roman state at the time of Jesus was this, mess with us and that will be your end, pinned up 
on a cross. Caesar is Lord and we have the power of life and death. The cross of Jesus changed what that symbol meant. When God raised Jesus from the dead, God declared, no, Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. God has the power of life over death. Put your trust in him. But the cross also says something else about power and to those who suffer unjustly from the state or other powers. Some of you may even be wearing a cross with a figure of Jesus on it. And that says, Jesus says, I'm in it with you in your suffering. I'm pretty sure that Jesus, uh, sorry, that Stephen, whoops, mix up the names then. Pretty sure that Stephen didn't have any kind of worked out theology of politics and faith. But for the time of his chairmanship, for the county council, he made a statement that there is a place for God, there is a place for Jesus Christ, and for prayer for the political life of our communities. And I, for one, thank him for that. I also thank Stephen for his knowledge and expertise. I'm on a committee, a, a little committee, the William Joseph, Hay Joseph Haynes Committee, which gives grants to local groups for the benefit of Long Buckby. And we've given grants to the library for internet connectivity, for trees in Station Road, for better sports facilities. And I hope you do realise this, but look around Long Buckby and it won't be long before you see something of Stephen's influence and he did it for the betterment of Long Buckby. Yes, I do know that Stephen could sometimes be outspoken. Family and friends are, are, are acknowledging that with me. He could make you wince, couldn't he? My first real experience of Stephen was at the parish council Christmas dinner in the village Spice. And I sat next to Stephen and opposite Chris Heaton Harris, who sadly can't be here today, I don't think, unless he's in secret somewhere, and his wife and daughter. And Stephen was sounding off on various politically incorrect matters. Oh, Stephen, you can't say that. And poor old Chris and his wife. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, you do, don't you? Incidentally, I do hope we pray for Chris and his family. What a big responsibility there is in government at the moment. And I did feel for him that day as well. But having acknowledged that, and we are all a work in progress, aren't we? And we all need the transforming power of God in our lives to make us more truly human. But as we gather together today, family, friends, colleagues, to give thanks for the good things that Stephen did, and also to recognise the value of public service, and also perhaps just to note the, pers the personal cost, the personal cost of public service and the abuse that people get sometimes. But also maybe I should challenge us all this afternoon, now that Stephen's gone, how can I serve my local community? You might also like to ask yourself, what place does Jesus Christ have in my politics and understanding of public service? So with that, I draw my own tribute to Stephen to a close, and I'd like to now invite us to join in prayer together. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, will you respond, hear our prayer? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, Lord of life, you've made us in your image, 
to reflect your truth and light. And we give you thanks for Stephen, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, and for the memories that we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant Stephen, as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn here today. Give them patient faith in times of darkness and strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal any memories of hurt or failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. To turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and to follow in his footsteps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, a prayer which I adapted for local use. And I prayed at the county council every time we met. Eternal God, fount and source of all authority and wisdom, hear our prayer for all who govern. Give to Elizabeth, our Queen, grace as the symbol of loyalty and unity for all our peoples. And give to Parliament and our councils wisdom and skill, imagination and energy, vision, understanding and integrity, that all may live in peace and happiness, truth and prosperity in our communities. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd now like to invite you to join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. The words are in the middle of your order of service. So let us pray with confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so if turning over the page in your order of service, we're now going to sing our final hymn. O Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy works thy hand hath made. And when I heard stories about Stephen, I heard about how much he loved fishing, perhaps sitting by the waterside, looking out on the beautiful countryside. Well, that's my thought. I wonder what your thoughts will be as we stand together to praise God in singing this hymn. Let's stand together. Stop. 
stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the And so let us commend Stephen to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. O God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Stephen to your mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer for ourselves as we prepare to leave this place. Support us, O Lord all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, 
in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In a moment, I'm going to lead the coffin out. The coffin contains Stephen and also the cremated remains of his wife, Elizabeth, and we're going to commit their, 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 them to be buried in the cemetery. And as we go out, the music we go out to is called Gracias, which is a tune that Stephen taught me. When he had the civic service here, he wanted the hymn now thank we all our God to the tune that I think some of you will have sung at school. Being a southerner, I didn't know it. But it's a great, it's a great hymn, now thank we all our God. Can I just draw your attention to the back of the order of service? You're warmly invited to join the family refreshments at Long Buckby Rugby Club in Station Road. And also... Donations in memory of Steve for Northamptonshire Domestic Abuse Service. There, is, um, so there are some collecting containers at the back of church as you go out, or you can also make a donation via the link on the service sheet here. And thank you also to those from St Lawrence Church who've helped out this afternoon. And so, a blessing on everyone here. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.